your self-defense techniques don't work, not at all. If you're using these martial arts weapons in the way that you see them used in the movies or at tournaments, you're gonna find out that they are not gonna work. We're gonna talk about the difference between movie martial arts or performance martial arts, show martial arts, things you might see at a tournament, things that are very popular in TV shows, specifically or especially, because it's true with all weapons, but especially with the Japanese bow and the nunchucks. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the self-defense cane because even the self-defense cane, one of my favorite self-defense tools, even this self-defense cane is going to have techniques that are demonstrated and very popular that are just simply not effective for self-defense. So self-defense techniques, self-defense techniques, let me hang that up. Self-defense techniques don't work at all unless you understand the difference between the performance side of things, the things that are very popular that we see all the time and the things that actually work. I'm gonna start first with the nunchucks because this has been talked about so much recently. A lot of people say this is just a trash weapon. Actually, I just wetted my hair down. Didn't get the haircut yet, but uh, thanks for noticing. The, uh, I just had a big workout. Um, this weapon, very popular, right? You see it in Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You see it in, um, what's that, Naruto with uh, a Mighty Guy and the other guy, Rock Lee. You see this in the Bruce Lee movies. Bruce Lee, probably the most famous of all, created all of these super fans with the nunchucks from these techniques that he's demonstrating that we've all seen over and over again that a lot of us know how to do. But then the question becomes, how can I use this thing? Because every time I use it for self-defense, these self-defense techniques don't work with the nunchucks, martial arts weapons that are used in uh, movies and TV shows on videos, on video games, the way that they're used, they're done to be flashy. It's like almost every other self-defense technique. I was thinking last night we were doing some Hubad Lubad from Filipino martial arts from, we're doing uh, uh, Jeet Kune Do, some of the Bruce Lee stuff, right? Wing, Wing Chun. We're do, we were doing last night some Hop Keto and then later variation Aikido, some Aikido. Cool. I love the Filipino martial artists. They're some of the toughest mentally and physically that I know. But the um, last night we we're doing some Aikido. We're doing a little bit of the Judo where I got my start in martial arts. And we're doing techniques that are very popular that people see that work really well when you have a good person to feed you a punch and then hold. Stand still. Stand still while I do all these techniques and take you to the ground, pressure point, joint lock and throw. And we still do those because they are part of martial arts. But I always make sure the students understand if someone's coming in your face, get your hands up and open, you get in a better position. And these are called the principles of self-defense. We're going to talk about how you can use these fancy martial arts weapons in the appropriate way, in the right way, both the proper technique and coupled with or married to self-defense principles. Then you have a self-defense tool that works. You have a martial arts weapon you can use for self-defense, but we're gonna talk about why you can't use these martial arts weapons for self-defense. Self-defense techniques with this pair of nunchucks are not going to be effective for you. You might get in a couple of good strikes before you smack yourself, before you bounce back and hit your hand. That's the biggest complaint everybody has. How can you use a weapon that injures you more than injures the other person. Someone said, my sensei used to tell me that if I got in a fight and I had a pair of nunchucks, I'd give it to the other guy because they're gonna hit themselves more than they're gonna hit you. And that comment uh, reflects one thing only. That martial arts instructor, no offense sensei, sensei, sifu, guru, whatever you were or are, you're not using them right. First of all, when you hold the nunchucks, if you hold it in the middle, you're gonna hurt yourself, but you can't do all the fancy stuff unless you know where to hold it for all of these tricks, right? You wanna throw it and catch it. Sometimes you drop it and just pick it up. You have to know where to hold it. So for the tricks, I'm gonna go around the neck to the other side, come through here, come behind, hand to hand. This looks menacing, right? Like the Bruce Lee triangle, right? The orbitals down and up, and you can get it to whip really fast, and it looks cool. Pop, under the arm, bam! Just like Bruce Lee, and 
when you do that, you're going to run into some, some resistance. And Master Gary Hernandez, who has a great channel on the self-defense cane and other self-defense, he gave this cool demonstration where he took a backpack and he had one of his students swinging the self-defense cane, doing some combat cane spinning, dancing around like a sprite. No, no offense, but he just throws the backpack at the guy, collapses him, moves in, smashes him in his face, takes his cane, and then whacks him with it. I don't think he had all that in the video. I would have done that. But you get the point. Spinning, for the wrong reason, spinning is not done in self-defense. Spinning is done in the movies. Why? Because it looks so cool, right? If you were using this for self-defense, first thing you have to do is stop holding it in the middle. Hitting it here against anything, you lose so much power. It's a leveraged weapon. It's, a, um, it's not a flail. It's a two-piece weapon almost like a whip, and you have to hold it at the very end. Now, you have leverage. The second thing that happens is when it hits, it's going to come back. And see how it hits my hand? That's because this is not the right nunchuck for self-defense. This is the perfect nunchuck, and if you can see it there, it's mostly faded away. These are old, about 20 years old. I may have worn, Oh, there it is. I may have worn it off. Oh, see it? XMA. What does XMA stand for? Extreme Martial Arts. What's extreme martial arts? It's only done by stuntmen, like the guy that came up with XMA. Um, yeah, Kung Fu, great example, thank you. Kung Fu, I like American Kung Fu, uh, Western, Western Kung Fu, I'm not gonna say American, it's not just American, it's the Western Kung Fu, which is called boxing. And take the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they took the Japanese, Brazilian, uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu and they, um, changed it. They modernized it. They evolved it. it. Evolved. Everything has to evolve or it dies. So it grows and it evolves and it changes. Maybe it starts in the West or in the East, comes over, and then it goes back to the East, gets better in the East, gets better in the West, gets better in the East, back and forth, back and forth. That's the proper evolution. My favorite Kung Fu to learn is boxing, right? Straight, straight jabs, just boom, boom, straight in, and then some hooks and some uppercuts. Now you have some effective self-defense techniques that are not hubad lubad. And yet, and, and the Wing Chun. <sighs> have you ever seen the movie where Bruce Lee punches through someone's soul or uh, Ip Man or whatever? Mike Tyson himself. Mike Tyson, one of the most famous Western boxers that you can imagine. Because he's more, you know, he's more contemporary. He's old now, but he's, most people know him. They've seen videos. They've seen... It's just how he would devastate people, right? Yeah, it's as easy as you make it. Good answer. Kind of, I'm kind of answering your long way around. Anything is easy if you work at it. It's not that it gets easier. You just get better. You get stronger. You'll learn it faster. If Kung Fu is your passion, go for Kung Fu. If you want effective self-defense, understand Kung Fu is not self-defense. If you've ever seen, like Master Wong used to put out these clickbait videos. No offense, Master Wong. You know they're clickbait. We all... Maybe he didn't know that term yet, but he knows now because he's, he's evolved his channel. This is what I'm saying. Master Wong now does better videos on Kung Fu and martial arts and what works and what doesn't work in self-defense. But back in the day, it was how Kung Fu or, or Wing Chun beat the boxer. Wing Chun doesn't beat the boxer. Mike uh, Ip Man, Donnie Yen in the Ip Man movie beat the boxer, beat Mike Tyson because it's a movie. In real life, Donnie Yen even... Uh, Mike Tyson's old self, which is still faster than almost any of the young guys, but Mike Tyson, now, not even in his prime, in his prime age, can beat anybody, Donnie Yen, any kung fu actor, unless he's getting paid by the kung fu movie to be beat up by Ip Man, the legend. Not a true story. Is it true that there was a boxer who would have been like Mike Tyson, who fought Ip Man back in the day? in Shanghai or Kung Fu or China or wherever it was? No, it's not true, it's made up. There's a lot of mythology in martial arts. That's why we're doing this video because these weapons get a bad name because people don't understand that there's the movie version, Ip Man the movie, and then there's the real version, Ip Man against Mike Tyson, no way, forget about it. You wanna learn Kung Fu, learn Kung Fu because you love it. But understand it's, when you're learning Kung Fu, there's the esoteric part, maybe you like the 
the, the, the monkey style. I don't know how to do monkey style, just acting it out. But maybe you want to learn Kung Fu because you like the movies. So learn it for the movies. Learn it because you like it. You want to learn some self-defense? Take some of those techniques. Not that one-inch punch, not the chain punch. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say it. I've, I've, I've tried it. I've tried it. I love practicing it because it's fun. I like to be able to do it because it's the fun side of martial arts. Is it the practical to defend myself? No, not at all. Practical to defend yourself is get in a better position. Learn how to extend your punch. Turn it a little bit. Learn how to get your body behind it. Learn how to put a pair of gloves on so you can hit that thing harder. And when you punch it, build real strength, speed, power, density of muscle, quick twitch muscle fibers. Learn how to defend yourself the right way, but understand self-defense and even self-defense and boxing are not the same thing. Boxing, you can take a lot of good techniques for self-defense, but it's not self-defense until you take the principles of self-defense, the first of which is always the same, situational awareness, pay attention, don't be in the fight if you don't have to. Number two, get in a better position. Number three, what are the targets I'm gonna remove or destroy? And if you wanna read a book about it, Tim Larkin, he's got a great channel here on YouTube, by the way. I don't know him. I don't get any money for endorsing it, but I've uh, benefited so much, I wanna pass it on to you. Tim Larkin, learn about self-defense principles, principles of self-defense. What are the targets, target acquisition? What are you gonna remove or destroy? And then that will tell you what techniques you need. It might be an elbow, might be a back fist, might be a punch, might be a Wing Chun punch. Maybe that will work. Might be a chop to the neck. Might be taking out his, uh, his foot. Might do that Wing Chun kick. There's nothing wrong with the Wing Chun kick if you understand how to do it. Good, it's a great book, right? But let's go back. I'm not trying to pick on Kung Fu because Kung Fu is a great martial artist, or martial arts, if you understand what it really is. It's for show. It is, uh, it's exciting to watch. It's, um, it keeps your body strong and healthy. It'll help with your calmness. It'll help you center your body. It has the aspects of the, um, the Tai Chi in it. But for self-defense, works in the movies, but that's the point. It works in the movies. Now, this is a different kind of nunchucks. I said that the other nunchucks, I don't even know what I did with them now, I smacked them around the room. They had that short chain, remember that? And so when I hit, it came back and smashed my hand. With the proper size chain, when you hit correctly, it's not gonna hit your hand. You're never gonna hold it here for self-defense. You're always gonna hold it here. Now, let's talk about martial arts techniques or, or self-defense techniques with martial arts weapons that actually do work. And the first one is following through on any strike. And you have, think about three basic angles, right? You have straight down or vertical, you have straight through the middle or horizontal. Did you hear it smack itself? It smack itself, didn't smack my hand. That's the biggest complaint people have. I hit and then it hits me. I'm going to give it to the other guy. He's going to hurt him. No, you're not. You're going to learn how to use it right. You're going to have the right kind for self-defense if you need it, if you need it. So it doesn't hit you, doesn't hit you. And the third kind is that angular strike. But notice also that I'm following through. So let's get this one out of the way because this is the first one, the one almost everybody picks on. Take those nunchucks. Shad himself of Shadiversity last week in a uh, post said, take the nunchucks, and throw them in the trash. And I don't know what he was using. It was some giant version. It was like this long and the chain was like this bigger as like a boot lace or something. And he's wearing his um, knight's armor. I don't know what he's wearing. He's wearing some kind of big smock. Maybe he just came from art class. Uh, he was doing medieval art or something. A anyway, I don't know. But he, he was using it the way we all use it for the movies. He was using it the way he would use it if he went to a martial arts tournament or he was teaching little kids who were all excited about becoming Ninja Turtles. He's using it like that, right? And he was really good at that. He said in his video, hey, I used to be a martial artist with Asian martial arts. Now he's into the Western... Um, medieval martial art, I don't know what they call it. There's, there's a name for it. Um, no offense, which is great, it's good stuff, I love it. Quarterstaff, broadsword, you know, you can be uh, King Arthur himself, or you can be Little John and Robin Hood. I like arrows too, so maybe you'll be Robin Hood himself. But you're holding here, right? And it comes through here, you know how to use it? And then again, you gotta marry it to the proper mindset, the proper self-defense mindset. Self-defense mindset means what are the strategies or 
What do you have to think about when it comes to martial arts? You have to think about not what technique am I going to use, but what targets am I going to remove or destroy? Ability to see, breathe temporarily, permanently through the throat. Ability to grab you, touch you, stab you, break the wrist, break the elbow, break the fingers, smash the, the bones. Maybe it's a wild animal, a vicious animal. Maybe you're striking low. But when you do strike, know the proper technique for self-defense is different than for the show. You want to do all the cool Bruce Lee stuff? Do that as your warm-up. It's going to condition the body. It's going to get you much better when you do defend yourself. But then when you defend yourself, change your technique. Grab the end. Create that. Now, second thing, or second weapon, is my favorite, the one that I practice with the most, and it's the Japanese bow or Japanese bow staff. Bow staff means staff staff. And look what I'm doing. I'm spinning it through my fingers. Good morning. It's good to see you. Nora, is that right? This is not a self-defense move. This, even though you can do it super fast, forward or in reverse, and you can do it to the side. Look how cool that looks, right? And then maybe you're doing wrist rolls. Wrist rolls, maybe you start to do some freestyle. Go behind the back, snap it down, behind the back, whip it over your head, hold the Ray Park. Ray Park was the actor who played Darth Maul in Star Wars. Maybe you do the Darth Maul move, and then you go back in, and you're, you're doing some cool spins. Not one of those, <laughs> good morning. Not one of those was a, yeah, right. You've done a million spins, not one of those would you use to defend yourself against an attack. And certainly, this amazing, cool, super cool, uh, this is in the link below if you want to see one of these, if you want to go to a tournament, or you just want a really fast, wicked fast, flashy, fun toy, not toy, tool, to get better at martial arts spinning. But again, what's the spin for? Spins for cardiovascular fitness. Spins for getting blood in the joints before the workout so that you don't injure yourself. Spin is to develop capacity in your hearts and lungs, just like the boxer jumps rope, right? That's all that is. The boxer doesn't take the rope into the ring. It's a totally different thing. And this graphite staff, which is wicked light, sturdy, and fast. Look how thin that is. I mean, that's a thin, thin. And this is a high ticket item. Not that high, it's, about, it's less than 100 bucks. But this, perfect for the movies. If I were in the movie, um, Tyler Lautner, who was the actor who was in that uh, vampire movie or TV show or whatever it was years ago. Now, man, that's years ago. Seems like he's a young kid. He would be still around. But uh, that's how he got his start. He was one of those guys on the tournament circuit where he was whipping this thing around, doing all kinds of tricks. Super duper cool, right? No, that's, that's all one piece. That's carbon fiber or, or not carbon fiber. They make it carbon fiber. That one is uh, graphite, I think. But it's super light. That'll break. As soon as you hit it against someone's face for self-defense, you're done. You no longer have that weapon. You have splinters. Let me show you what works, though. Oak. And in this case, white oak. And this thing has the nice heft. It's nice and heavy. Right? And I can spin it. And I will spin it because the strength that I get in my hands from spinning it is going to prepare me to defend myself, thrust, strike, 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 lift them up in the air with a basic strike. The same things I learned when I was in the Marine Corps at boot camp Paris Island 150 years ago. You stood in the crucible in the little circle when you know, they run around, you wait for the guy with your pugil sticks. The pugil sticks, those sticks, and they have two big uh, white, looks like a giant Q-tip. Doesn't feel like a Q-tip. And it's got a stick in the middle and it represents your rifle. On one end is a bayonet strike. On the other end is a rifle butt strike. Between a bayonet, which will go through somebody, or a rifle butt, which will smash everything, it's very effective. But you don't stand there waiting for the guy. In fact, if you were to do this, and I saw you, I would immediately attack. Because there's nothing you can do about it. If you think that spinning... Any version of it is going to defend yourself. It won't work. But why do we spin? Why is it so exciting? 
because we see it all the time, videos, movies. There was a, there's a guy recently tries everything on YouTube. He's got a cool YouTube channel, picks up new techniques, new random things. So he did a skip catch. Some of you guys know Alex, maybe, whatever his name is, some young, some Gen Xer or millennial or something. And it's cool. It's teaching everybody how to do the skip catch. Or like Jake Mace, Kung Fu. Everybody's most hated Kung Fu guy. Not everybody, just the, uh, the Kung Fu guys who don't have a sense of humor. Anyway, so they, they it, you know, guys got like 10 million views. And he's showing all these ineffective for self-defense, but super cool to learn. Good for your timing, distance, spatial awareness, cardiovascular fitness, um, proprioception. Good for your soul because you get to do something cool and you love it. And now you're getting up and moving. You didn't want to go for a walk. You didn't want to do some deep leg bends. You didn't feel like doing burpees and push-ups. So you grab your staff. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's awesome. Get it up over your head, spin it, bring it down behind your back, spin it. But understand when it comes to self-defense. Yeah, Mike Boyd, when it comes to self-defense, this is not meant to be spun, swung, anything like that. This is a thrusting weapon. If you wanna learn the technique that works with the long staff or any size staff or martial arts stick or stick in general, learn to thrust. Learn an angular strike, a backhand horizontal strike or front hand, and then again, it comes down to those three things, right? Four, I have thrusting, I have angular strikes, I have horizontal strikes, and I have vertical strikes, and then the opposite of those. So I can angle up, that's very effective by the way. I can thrust with the back side, there's my rifle butt. I can horizontal with the front hand instead of the back hand. And I can come over the top with the back hand. Those are all versions of just four basic strikes, four techniques. Now, how many ways can you spin it? It's unlimited. I, I don't even think I know probably half of them. I know, I know the best half. <laughs> No, I don't, I don't know, there, and then there's a, there's a whole other style of spinning the martial arts staff that comes out of the, um, what do they call that? Baton twirling. There's the baton twirlers, like Michelle, one of the best stunt women, martial arts, has her channel, she does daily videos, and she shows you all these cool things you can do, go behind the back, and she's one of the best with the, with the lightsabers and the, the long staff or she has actually a very really short staff. And she's, she's show, you know, they're showing the bow, or the martial arts staff, or whatever she's calling it, Michelle Smith. Anyway, and, and I, I love watching the channel because I pick up new ticks, tips and techniques and I learn new things. Is it martial arts? Is it practical self-defense? Not even one shadow of 1%. Does that mean she doesn't know how? I'm sure she knows how. She's a stunt woman. She probably knows that if she were in a fight for real, she's not doing Michelle Krista Smith, that's it. She wouldn't know all that, right? So you're gonna learn how to spin, but you're also gonna learn how to defend. In self-defense, now we have to take the basic techniques. Hello to Brazil. Take the basic techniques that work, right? Again, four fundamentals. Thank you, fundamentals. You have thrusting, either front of it or the back. Either the front or the back. And look, the dog's running back here, the vicious animal that's off the chain hurting people. There's a thrust to the back. Doesn't matter which angle but you're keeping it simple. You're waiting. You're not waiting with the spin. You're not intimidating with the spin. You're not trying to be Ray Park in Star Wars. You're waiting. You're gonna thrust, or thrust, 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 angular strike, angle down, angle up, horizontal, horizontal, uh, vertical, straight down on top, vertical, straight down on top, or even lift them up between the legs. If it works, you're gonna use it. That's the difference between the movie version with the wrong weapon, short chain nunchucks made for looking super fancy and cool. And I have another pair over on the wall, both of both weapons that light up and it's made out of plastic. So you can see the light, the LED lights go through. And in the corner, I have lightsabers and those are super cool. Self-defense? No, not even a little bit, not 1%. And, but, but, and here's why I want you to know this, okay? Because everybody's gonna say, not everybody, there are critics and experts who are gonna say, that's trash, do it. Shadowversity, right? In Shadowversity, we went to school last week and we learned from Shad, 
Professor Shad that uh, this is a trash rep. Throw it in the trash. But we also learned he doesn't know how to use it. No offense. That's just a fact. And then this, same thing. This is made out of the wrong material. It's the wrong weight. It's going to break. It's going to shatter. But, yeah, love those. You know what? The, the truth about the LED weapons, before you spend your money on them, they're way heavy and they're way thick. So I, I like them too, but I use them like a workout, like a weight workout. You're not going to find that they, there, there are better options that are, that are lighter. That particular brand that comes from KarateMart.com, I would skip those unless you're really into having that kind of thing. I got those years ago. I shortened the chain so that they move faster and it's from high impact uh, PVC, but trust me, <laughs> I only have one pair left. There's a reason because the other pair is broken. Uh, they're not unbreakable. Anyway, ju just, I just wanted to let you know in case you're thinking about that. And if you ever see those little pocket, those pocket uh, expandable staffs, that junk that they sell, I call it AliExpress or Alibaba junk, uh, drop ship junk from China. The, um, the little expandable baton, garbage, pure garbage. Please, if, you ha if, you're, if you're ever considering, you ever see that because the marketing, right? You'll get some influencer, makes a really cool video, and you're like, oh, I could use that. No, you can't. They're lying to you. They've changed it in the way, put something inside so it doesn't fall apart. It's garbage. It won't last you one day, and it's going to slice your hands up because the metal is super thin. That's a trick that comes from the magicians. You know how the magician pops out his uh, magician's wand? It's the same thing. It's just a spiral and it comes out. So don't buy those. Good. Indian clubs. Perfect. I love Indian clubs because you can get a workout with the Indian club and it's a club. If you need to defend yourself, how basic is that? Just a club. Smash. Same basic techniques. Angles, horizontal, vertical. Don't overcomplicate it. Make it work. But you got to take, again, the mental shift. Proper technique. Learn martial arts weapons that work. Any martial arts weapon will work, by the way. I've got a whole bucket of them over here. I've got the taunt. I even have, let me get this real quick. These three section staffs, three section staffs. Now I'm going to do some videos. Let me get the wooden one. We'll see if I hit myself. <laughs> this was made out of white wax wood. It's the only weapon I have that's, that's wax wood. Wax wood's a pretty good option, but this one, Looks really cool in a Kung Fu movie, right? And if you hit yourself with it, yeah. But if you know how to use it, you're not gonna use it the way that you do in the Kung Fu movies. In the Kung Fu movies, it all works great because you know how, you've got an actor on the other side fighting you. If you wanna learn how to use it properly, you're gonna change your technique. You're not gonna spin with it. You're gonna start here, you're gonna strike through, you're gonna come through and jab, and then you start to realize, well, wait a minute, why do I have three, <laughs> three pieces of wood stuck uh, with the chains on each side? Do you wanna learn, learn these? Yeah, learn them. Um, I don't know, taller than I am. Looks like maybe about six and a half feet. But if you want a super effective weapon like that, Get yourself some collie sticks, right? Collie sticks, here we go. Some Cinewale. Super cool, if you have a partner who knows how to do the same thing you do, you start cinewale each other. Cinewale just means um, weaving, weaving pattern. Now you have somebody, it sounds like this. And everybody in the audience is like, whoa, gotta learn that. And then, if it's a really group of cool guys and girls, they take, they throw these down and they put the goggles on like they're in uh, ninth grade science. And it's chemistry, ninth grade chemistry. They put the chemistry goggles on and they pick up the machetes and they start. And the sparks are flying because it's metal on metal. And everybody's like, whoa, super cool. You're going to die. But you're not because you practiced and you practiced and you practiced. Now, would you do that for self-defense? No, not at all. How do you use a stick for self-defense? Thrust. Angular strikes, horizontal strikes, vertical strikes. And in this case, you have one more, that straight backhand jab. Or you come through from here, from here, down on top, into the stomach, striking, striking, keeping it simple. Does it work for self-defense? Yes. Send a wally for self-defense, machetes, ninth grade uh, science. 
goggles. No, go dissect a, a frog. It'll be a time better spent. Try to do it with a machete, right? Then you'll get some really good skill. But not, not fighting. Was it, is a machete effective for self-defense? Yeah, it's a horrible, horrible weapon that, they, that bad guys use to hurt people all the time. Yes, it's effective. Are they out there spinning? No, they're not. They pull it out, boom, and then they're done. It's horrible. It's a hacking weapon. All right, last weapon I want to talk about. Self-defense. You have to have the principles of self-defense. The principles are, hello, it's good to see you. Caduce, nice to see you. Um, situational awareness. You come out of your house, your apartment, the room you're renting, and you look around. Who's, who's like right here? Who's close enough to touch you? Then you look up. Who's across the street? Who's down the hallway? Who's hiding behind the big bushes or the big flower planter? Who's over there by the, that situation awareness. Pay attention, pay attention. Take your phone and stick it in your pocket when you go outside. You don't need to do this. And if you're using your phone to figure out where you're going, you look at it, you walk to that street, confirm, you hold it like this and you look at it. You don't get into this habit. You look down here, you can't see the periphery. It's as simple as that. You look down here, you can't see anywhere like this. There could be a guy coming right here to so smash your head. You look up, you hold it up. Okay, I'm supposed to turn left here. Stick in your pocket, turn left, and then you keep going. You ha yeah, pay attention to your surroundings. It's that simple. Pay attention and think. Use your own brain. You've got to start thinking about stuff. It's so easy in this world to let everything, everybody else do the thinking for you. you we used to use maps. <laughs> you'd open your map. You'd consult your map, and you'd look at the map, and you have to find the name of the street. And then you'd, you'd, you'd okay, I'm going to turn this way. Yeah. Right. Chiropractors are making more money than they've ever made. It's not me. Go Google it, right? And they call it a cell phone neck or, or 45 degree syndrome, syndrome, or it's got a whole bunch of different names. But basically, it's because you're doing this and your head weighs however many pounds, nine pounds in your head. And it's like holding a bowling ball up with these muscles all day because you're like this all day or you're like this. And it's, and it's killing you. It's killing you more people than the other stuff does. So you have to... Yeah, well, <laughs> that happens a lot. And it happens at every age. It's not young people. I've seen, I was at the freeway, the trucks come flying through. If they, the light's red, everybody waits at least 20, if they're smart, or they're from around here, at least 10 seconds before they go, at least five to 10 seconds. And it's because at this big intersection, the, the trucks are coming 70 miles an hour and they don't even hit the brakes. And I look at the driver and he's like this, truck truck, professional drivers, right? And then not to mention all the other drivers. And, and there are accidents, horrific, uh, deadly accidents that happen on a regular basis every couple months at that intersection, close to my house. And the whole thing gets struck down. There was one by the kid's school yesterday. We're two hours late for school because there was a uh, fatal accident. They close everything down to do the investigation, close down for uh, hours. I don't know what happened, but I guess, I'm guessing, one or both of the drivers was driving like this. And so if the drivers are driving like that and you do that on the street and horrific story, the guy was like this on the corner down here. There are a lot of high rise buildings that are constantly building on the ocean. Big crane comes by. The guy ends up in the wheels of the crane. I won't give you the rest. It's horrific. You don't want to hear it. But it's and it's only it's because he was like this. If he had just been watching. He would have seen and he would have backed up. The cranes don't move that fast. They didn't, they didn't know the guy was in the wheels for like miles, right? Horrific story, but I want to make a graphic so you stop doing this and you stick it in your pocket. Situational awareness, number one. Number two, get in a better position. Put something between you and the threat. If you don't have anything in your hand, it's your hands, elbows, nice and rigid, right? This is called the flinch block. They throw that block. You want to learn more about the flinch block? Follow Tony Blower. Tony Blower in uh, uh, just t B L A U E R. Gold standard. Tony Blair's been around for years and years. I took seminars a long time ago through the military. Took seminars through the martial arts. Took seminars from people that he had taught. A lot of the guys that I trained with had taught, had learned from spear system. That's it, spear system. It's personal self-defense, personal safety. It's not martial arts. It's not combat or uh, competition combat. It's real combat. It's what works. The flinch block. Learn how to do some basic strikes, some straight punches, and then move laterally. Some straight Great punches, then move laterally. But then ask yourself the most important questions. What target can you remove or destroy to keep yourself safe? 
the ability for them to see, breathe, per temporarily, permanently, et cetera, et cetera. Now, let's talk one last thing about self-defense techniques don't work. Self-defense don't, techniques don't work with martial arts weapons unless you know two things or you shift two things. The first is understand the difference between what looks good and why people do that and why people think that this is self-defense, right? Figure eight drill, spinning, back and forth. I do it every single workout. I teach it to every single student. And I also, while we're doing it, say this is not self-defense. This is to prepare yourself for self-defense. This is like the boxer jumping rope. You're gonna build your capacity. You're gonna get your heart rate up. You're gonna build callus on your hand. You're gonna build that proprioception, timing, distance, spatial awareness. But then when it comes to self-defense, you're gonna have your weight on it, get in that better position. Thrust, angle down, come straight across, turn off their uh, computer, knock them out for self-defense. Or we're in the uh, other hand, this position, from here, up through the middle, thrust here, smash through here, come down here, take this tooth. This is unique to this weapon. Every weapon has its own unique feature. Just rip everything, rip it with that tooth for self-defense. It's very effective, but understand that I'm not going to uh, stand here and wait for you to come in holding here and then try to catch your hand and twist and take you down and, and flip you and spin you and do some kind of fancy Aikido, Hapkido, Kane, Kane Fu, Kane technique. I'm not saying Kane Fu is bad. I like the strikes in Kane Fu, but I'm not trying to joint lock pressure point anything else. The most I'll get is if you put your hands here, I might bring it down and smash, boom, and go right through the face for self-defense. Maybe punch a couple like this. And then here we go back into my rifle strikes Right, right, bayonet, rifle butt, either the hand here, maybe the hand is here, but they're simple. Simple of work, simple is effective, simple, immediate direct explosive. That's the only way that you can create self-defense techniques with a walking cane, with the bow, with the Joe, with the tanfa, the sai. I don't care which weapon it is. The trash nunchucks, is it trash or do you know how to use it? Understand how they're used traditionally before the movies, right? Way back when, before the movies, before the TV shows started to make everything look super cool. And uh, think of like the Bourne, Jason Bourne movies. That's FMA, that's Filipino martial arts. And um, what's the other one? And Jeet Kune Do and all that. And there's, they're all kind of intermixed in there. Uh, the Taken shows with Liam Neeson, right? They're breaking the table down. <laughs> Super cool, looks super duper cool. But have you ever tried to fight with it? I have, and not, not for real, but you know, to, to test things out. In a real sparring match where the guy's really punching me in my face and I got the helmet on and he's got the eight or 16 ounce gloves and you're trying to do, you know, catch the punch and, you know, and, 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 and so you could say, well, uh, you just haven't practiced enough. And I said, okay, I practiced a lot, but it, it, I know that if I'm here and he's coming in and I'm trying to do these techniques, which I know work with a partner who's feeding me and stopping or even going slow or even and then slowly speeding up. And we're doing the hubad, lubad and the hubad and then all this kind of stuff. super cool, looks awesome, makes me feel like I really know what I'm doing. But in the street for self-defense, I'm not doing that. I mean, comes the second one, maybe an elbow, maybe a knee. Maybe I have to stop him from taking me down and I've got to go into a sprawl and then I have to know what I'm doing on the ground, even just a little bit. So you have, yeah, you don't know what they're going to do. There's all those old skits. One of my favorite was, uh, was Jim Carrey. With <laughs> what was that old show that he was on, Mad TV? Or In Living Color, back in the day. Some of you know it, uh, some of you have never seen it, but you can find it here. I think Eddie Murphy had a character too, call himself Karate Man. Karate Man doesn't bleed. And the guy had stabbed him four times, the blood's squirting out everywhere. But the, the skit was, the guy's got a knife, gives it to the student. It's like that whole, they made a whole movie with, uh, oh, I can't remember. It's to a bunch of comedic actors, a little bit dark. And it's got, yeah, In Living Color, what was the movie? The guy's got the old Atomics pants, he's got the headband, and he's, it's got, oh, Napoleon Dynamite. There's that scene in Napoleon Dynamite. And then, yeah, all these different McDojo guys, right? 
And this idea that, you know, come at me with the knife. And the guy, the lady comes up in the old uh, In Living Color skits and stabs, stabs him here. He's got the white gi, and so the blood's coming out, of course. So it looks great, you know, if, because it's a, it's a comedy skit. So, and then he's, no, no, no. Not with that hand, with this hand. So then she comes up and boom, and he's, she's, he's ready to go, boom, you know, take her down like we've all practiced over and over and over again. And because we've, we've learned how to do these self-defense techniques. And then she comes over the top and it sticks in them here and the blood's coming. Go Google it, go Google, Google the skit. Jim Carrey and Karate Man or whatever. And it's just this idea that, and that's what makes us look so ridiculous. And so, and that's, and, and that's you know, the, the, the truth is in the, the joke. And the joke is that this stuff doesn't work if it's done in this rigid environment. Get rid of, stop relying on the technique and learn the principle. The principle is pay attention, better position. What targets can you remove or destroy? And don't focus on that knife. Go for the face, knock them out first. Interrupt their line of sight, smash them, keep them at arm's distance. You know, the basic kick to the leg. Keep everything immediate, direct, and explosive. And any martial arts weapon works. Every martial arts weapon works with the right technique and the right principles. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in just a little bit.